we have a fair value gap in the form of a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency with only this little area remaining. So when the market traded up to this point here, it didn't completely go back up to that point there. You hear that? You should be able to hear that. That's that's lightning and thunder going off up here. <laughs> so because it didn't completely reprice that, this is the exposed area of inefficiency. Was it inefficient with buy side delivery? Because it's a SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. So that means the market will want to likely draw back up in there with delivery to the buy side. That means upward motion. And buy side liquidity or buy stops will be resting just above this. I'm showing you the new week opening gap high and low here. And here is that weekly fair value gap, the high of it and the low of it. You can see that we ran up initially to take the buy side, make an attempt to completely reprice to the SIBI high. So all of this movement here was a sucker's play. Retail traders that bought all this, unless they were nimble and got out, they got caught off guard and offside. And then the market repriced down to where I told you last Friday we would see it trade to. Notice the use of the new week opening gap here and here. All right, moving down to a five minute chart. Here's the brass tacks of today's delivery. New York opening midnight price. That is this candle's opening price. That's extended throughout the day all the way to 11 a.m. That's the rules I give. And here you see the delivery of price. The market rallies at 9.30, trades up to the buy side liquidity pool that I showed you on the 15 minute time frame inside that 15 minute fair value gap SIBI. Let me take you back up one slide and just make sure you know what I'm looking at. This area over here and this high, that's that line here in that shaded area. So we're zooming in on a five minute chart inside this price action right here. Okay. That's this on a five minute chart. I'm ringing in the New York opening price. So the algorithm is going to reprice to a premium to some random level. No, to reprice up to an old inefficiency and the best shorts are what? What does my lectures tell you? Above the opening price at midnight New York local time. The market rallies up multiple times. Then we also have, what is this over here? The buy side liquidity. Why am I picking these highs here? The question always comes up. ICT, why are you picking that high for your buy side liquidity pool? Why not this candle? Why not that high? Because I just taught you with the lecture from last week, one setup for a life. What I did in that lecture was to teach you how to find a setup that will serve you for the rest of your life. And I teach you how to look for liquidity. All of this run here is a Judas swing. A Judas swing is what I dub a false run that gets people to chase it. They get offside. It goes to a very specific price PV array. The element is what? We're going to enter a sell program. It's going to go to a very specific price level. Not a supply and demand zone, not a harmonic pattern, not Elliott Wave and Wyckoff is asleep in this. This level right down here is exactly where your attention was called to last Friday. The weekend happened. We can't do anything on Saturday. Sunday we opened up, created the new week opening gap. The market rallies through it to this very specific levels I'm showing you here. Running out buy side here. What kind of buy side is that? What does what these highs anchor to? London session liquidity. Then we have the low of the London session. What is that? That's the London session sell side liquidity. So notice how the market at open at 930 rallies up, sucks everybody in thinking it's going to go higher. Goes into a level I'm teaching you, runs above the New York midnight opening price, which is exactly where the highest probability shorts are going to form. If you're bearish, the best short entries are going to occur at the price, not the time, the price of New York opening price. What time 
When is the Judas swing going to form? At 9.30 to 10 o'clock. That is your opening range. So we are expecting this rally higher to be opposed to the direction we're expecting last Friday down there. So retail sees all this and thinks, wow, look at that, man. It's really going up. Yeah, it's going up for smart money to go short. Counterparty, London session, liquidity. Aiming for London session, liquidity. Utilizing what? What are we, what are we using here? I'm going to teach you something in, in, in addition to everything else you've already learned so far. This is the opening range gap. Okay, and what you're looking at is this candle here is Friday's data. And you're going to be showing this on your trading view chart with down here, down here in the lower right hand corner, regular trading hours needs to be toggled, not electronic trading hours. So regular trading hours on a one minute chart on the Friday, you're going to hover over the last candle on Friday and it's going to show 4.14 p.m. This price here, the close, is what's being shown for that candle right there. So at 4.14 p.m. Friday, June 23rd, 2023, the closing price is 4,388 even. That's what I'm highlighting, the closing price. Then you're going to wait until 9.30 in the morning, New York local time, when the market starts trading regular trading hours for Monday. That opening price here. Is it 9.30 a.m. Monday, June 26, 2023? So I'm highlighting the opening price. So the difference between the closing price on Friday and the opening price on the next trading day or Monday, that is the opening range gap. This so happens to be that it's an opening range gap lower because we opened lower than where we closed on Friday. If we would open higher than where we closed on Friday, it would have been an opening range gap higher. Whenever there's an opening range gap lower than Friday's close, we are opening with a discount opening range gap. If we are opening with a gap that's above Friday's close, we are opening with an opening range gap premium. Okay, so this two specific levels and the one that makes the middle or consequent encouragement, any gap is always going to be utilizing the midpoint is consequent encouragement. Any order block, whether it be a breaker block, whether it be a bullish or bearish order block, propulsion block, Every middle point or midpoint of it is mean threshold. There's a two different viewpoint of a midpoint. So a gap or wick, the midpoint of that range would be consequent encouragement. Any other order block is going to be mean threshold, which is 50% of that range. So now that we have the opening range gap defined, let's take that information and apply it to the one minute chart. Again, here's ES, one minute chart, September 2023 delivery. We can see that rally here at 930. All of this is a Judas swing running out above the buy side liquidity in the London session. You'd see this with the electronic trading hours down here. So the market rallies up into that premium fair value gap in the form of a SIBI and that buy side liquidity here. You're going to need to watch this video a few times so that we don't lose yourself in the different time frames. And we're trading above the New York midnight opening price, which is this level right here. We have a more definitive drop here where we've taken out this low and this low, and we have a fair value gap right there. You could have used this one to enter, but you would have had to use a stop that factored in this fair value gap. So that means you'd have to have a stop loss above that short term high. I didn't like that. I had to wait for that. Price ran up to it once more and then broke. Now, because we had a shift in market structure here below that low, you could have used that low. There's nothing wrong with that. But that high wasn't pierced by this high. And then the only thing it was doing was running one more time above the New York midnight opening price and back inside that fair value gap, SIBI. So it's one more time running into a premium. Then we broke down and we had two gaps here. This one that's shaded in yellow and this one here. If you watch the recording in the link that I share in the description of this video, you're going to see that there is a 
measurement that I'm running from this candle's low to this candle's high, and I'm finding half of that, or 50% of it. So consequent encouragement, I place my stop loss just above that. Why did I do that? Because we've already proven algorithmically that we're not going higher. So this drop down, even though it didn't take up that low, I have to use the two rule when there's two gaps, you have to factor in the higher gap. So how far was I willing to be treated in, in terms of drawdown and placing my stop loss without having the full risk of that open gap? The difference between this high and that low, that higher fair value gap. So consequent encroachment, my stop loss was just above that. You'll see it in the execution. Okay, I promise you, you'll see it. But I'm going to make sure I'm making a, a special note of that, and that's why I'm doing it. So the shift in market structure, then even though it didn't take this low out, it didn't need to for me to enter. And I'm entering inside this. So I'm going to anticipate the algorithm repricing back down into the opening range gap. So this is a repricing macro. All of this is a Judas swing. And I had things I had to take care of outside the house, so I wasn't able to manage it or do anything else in addition to. So I just used the simple silver bullet rules that I taught you, which would be take the low to the high, find equilibrium. What PD array would be a discount array below 50% or below this level here? There is a gap here. So I was looking for it to trade towards the opening range gap and trade into a discount, and I just used a imbalance there and worked below the new week opening gap below and you'll see that is the case here with the executions 4387 and three quarters 4387 even shorting at six contracts at 4395 and a half and 4394 and a half inside of this idea of premium running to discount now, if it would have been a day trade that I could have been managing, um, I would have taken additional entries, which is what you watch me highlight in the review video where I'm showing this fair value gap here, and I actually put a limit order there. So that was a mental marker for you to know that I'm referring to that as it's number one, it's an additional entry that you could have used, or a pyramid, and an aiming for this lower end target at 43.70. But I couldn't stay with it today. I had other things I had to do outside the house, and my wife wasn't going to permit me to be looking at the charts. To just to just tell you another instance of I told you so. <laughs> so here is the one minute chart zoomed in here. The opening range gap, the Judas swing up. We have buy side liquidity. This is Friday's New York session liquidity. This is another factor and the reason why I wanted to wait, and I didn't take this one here. Buy side liquidity rallied, shorted. Here would have been fine if you had a stop here. You're dropping two fair value gaps here and here. I'm going to try to enter this one and I'm going to use 50% of this fair value gaps range and the stop would have to be above that. That's what you see me do in the execution. It drops down, goes back up into a fair value gap, which is a SIBI, sells on a balance, buy side efficiency. It trades up into it once more. And if that limit order would have been you know, staying in the market, I mean, not taking the limit exits here, uh, that would have been an additional pyramid entry. And I would have had to hold on through the entirety of the lunch session and anticipate a run back into new week opening gap, which is what we see here. Perfect consequent encouragement. All of this run up here is the Judas swing. Now, you can and you could have taken some of this move here. And that's fine. If you would have looked for these ideas to get short or sell your long position, both instances are correct. But because I told you last week on Friday at 9 o'clock in the morning, New York look time, that we will be trading to 43.70 on ES, I'm looking for shorts. So the ideal scenario would be I want to see it run what? Liquidity. We had two forms of liquidity. We had the London session. Buy side, and we had Friday's New York session buy side. Both go back through this presentation again, go into your own charts, annotate them just like I'm showing you here. And you'll see all of these things are exactly why I was taking the trade. Fair value gap, 
using just the silver bullet mentality back inside of the opening range gap, but more specifically using a run below the new week opening gap low. And I don't need it to be all the way down here to make what would be equivalent to if both trades were taken by you, both the ES and the NASDAQ trades as you watch me, because I did dual dealings. That means I'm doing both indices. I traded short on NASDAQ and I traded short on ES. If you would have taken these same trades, your funded account or your live account would have gone up sixteen thousand dollars too. Would have the full run also. Now I taught you in that one setup for life. I teach you liquidity. If I'm bearish and notice that we did not get down to that forty three seventy level, did it get to the forty three seventy level yet? No. What do we have here? What's this? The opposite of this. So if this is New York lunch buy side liquidity, okay, what's the highs? Where's the liquidity at during the lunch hour? Well, here's noon here. So we have a high here. We have a high here. And we have that opening range gap, which is that shaded area. So it makes perfect sense for it to do what? Reach up into half of that yellow shaded area, right? So that's reasonable. Why would it be possibly advantageous to see price do that who would be better equipped to make a trade with that idea everyone that knew that price is likely to go down to 4370 on friday of last week shorts so smart money can wait for the algorithm to reprice back up into half of the shaded area or just above these relative equal highs so the algorithm runs quickly to the, get to that level, and then it spends time here until we get to what? The 315, the 345 market on close algorithm. 315, the 345, boom. It runs to what? The target I told you would trade to on Friday at 9 o'clock in the morning. 